Suzuki Nelli della Massimiliano di Luardi Nieto Vitali Tormu Puntini Ferretti Bianchi e Lazzarini non mancate domenica 9 10 83 al grosso tromo di Cavallara Montagna per la gara di motocross pro clinica mobile vai Barri
Milan dentro no, si sta qui si sta in linea qui si sta in linea così si sta in linea così perché se, que se questi si toccano se questi
Yeah. 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 Maybe direct call to Mr. Miracle, you have to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think
soon, yeah, very soon. That's the problem. No rest, I think. Brazil, three months. <laughs> Forget it.
know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> nothing. And you interrupted him. Well, yeah. when, when we've got this shit up to air, and we're working on the um, and now with your thumb, you can use if a we zoom. Stop, there's, no, 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 push no, it again. there's no... Right. Kind of not turning right, off. Right, that's true. right in there. part of the track towards turn three. This is the fastest corner. A really fast rider like Mamola can make up quite a bit of ground through a fast corner like this. Then up the hill to turn four, in my mind the most difficult turn on the track. You approach it fast, it's blind, and has a decreasing radius that tends to push you out to the outside white line. You then accelerate hard up the hill towards the corkscrew. A very slow left and right that can be tricky if you try to save time here. Then on to turn seven, a long left-hander that really sorts out the fast riders from the slow riders. And on to turn eight, a right-hand third gear bend, only the second right-hander on the track. Then all the way down to first gear for turn nine, the slowest corner on the track. To do well at Laguna Seca, you must go slow around the slow corners, but very, very fast around the fast corners. Well, that's the battleground for the Superbike and Formula One racers. As the riders get ready to come out for the Superbike finale, let's take this opportunity to meet some of the top runners. The favorite to win today's Superbike race has to be young flying Fred Merkel, the number one team Honda rider from Stockton, California. But right behind him in the Superbike Championship race is Sam McDonald, also on a Honda Interceptor, 21 years old from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Number 11 is the international star from Caracas, Venezuela, always up among the front runners, Roberto Pietre. On the Yoshimura Suzuki, the two-time national Superbike champion, Wes Cooley from Ramona, California. And a newcomer to the leaderboard in Superbike racing from Brockton, Massachusetts on the Kawasaki, Dale Quarterly. Well, those are some of the 42 riders now preparing themselves for the first race today. Superbikes, to put them in car racing terms, are like NASCAR stock cars are to regular street cars. They look like something you could buy from a dealer and ride on the street, but they're extremely fast and potent. Exotic racing machines. The countdown is on for throw. And it's Sam McDonald winning the drag race up the hill into turn one, ahead of number 84, Merkel, to take the lead. McDonald, Merkel, then Wes Cooley as they thunder towards turn three on lap one. And Cooley outbreaks Merkel to slip inside on the entrance to turn three. A close trio followed by Roberto Pietre and Dale Quarterly. And Cooley puts it by Sam McDonald under the bridge to take the lead going into turn number four. Cooley now ahead of McDonald and Merkel, followed by Pietre Quarterly, Kevin Schwartz from Houston, Texas, number 87, and Michael Harth from Oklahoma City. The race leader, Wes Cooley, into the corkscrew on lap one. It's early yet in this 30-lap race, but certainly Cooley is letting Merkel and McDonald know that he is in the hunt and not to be discounted. Wes Cooley is one of the old men of superbike racing with two national superbike championships to his credit over his many years of competition. 
Merkel and McDonald, on the other hand, are mavericks, young and full of vim and vigor. Eager heirs to the Superbike Championship title that Cooley, Eddie Lawson, and Wayne Rainey have held since 1979. End of the first lap, and it's Cooley number 34, McDonald 29, Merkel 84, Pietri number 11, Quarterly number 32, and Schwartz 87. McDonald dives for the inside line into turn one, but Cooley holds him off. Cooley setting the early pace in a fast one of that, even pulling a little away from McDonald and Merkel. Turn three, and it's knees out and bikes leaned over to the maximum. The tire adhesion will allow. Stuart Rollins talked to Wes earlier about this Laguna Seca track. As far as the track's concerned, um, I really like it because it fits my style. There's only two spots where you really have to be hard on the brakes. That's the corkscrew up the top of the hill and turn nine here down on the front straightaway. Most of the other turns are basically just shut it off a little bit, get right back in the throttle, and I like those kind of fast turns, you know. That's where you make up the time is in the fast corner, so I really enjoy this course. It may be too early to say, but it looks like Cooley is putting in his best ride for some time. Cooley from flying Fred Merkel, who got past McDonald and the corkscrew. And Merkel is now right on Cooley's rear tire and takes the inside lie going into turn number nine and takes the lead away coming up to the end of lap two. Merkel ahead of Cooley, then McDonald, and Dale Quarterly, number 32, has gotten past Roberto Pietre, number 11. Cooley is not to be discounted. He's a fighter. Back in 12th place, number 36, Randy Skyver from Everett, Washington, followed by number 10, Jim Poet, number 89, and number 141, Jeff Haney. And Cooley has squeezed past Merkel going into the corkscrew. Wes Cooley, who's been plagued by crashes and injuries of late, he crashed heavily earlier this year in the transatlantic trophy races, damaging one of his vertebrae. But is really making a comeback in style. Merkel and McDonald have him in sight, but they're not controlling the race like most people expected. Number 94, slowing down and out of the race. That's Ken Appelanap from Temple City, California. Now Merkel takes the inside line and turn one and gets by Cooley. Merkel with a movie star good looks. He's touted as the next Superbike champion and currently in the championship points lead ahead of McDonald. Merkel ahead of Cooley and McDonald into turn number three. Now these three are having a race all their own, lead swapping and drafting each other. Drafting, Larry, allows bikes with less horsepower to stay up with and even pass bikes with more horsepower. Merkel through the corkscrew, a quick left and right, and now that green machine of Dale Quarterly has caught up and has McDonald in his sights. Dale Quarterly qualified fourth at this Laguna Seca track. It's a rider's track as far as there's a lot of tight turns. The biggest problem here is it's a really fast track. You go through the turns, let's say turn two, and so you're going 130 miles an hour with a motorcycle laid over enough that your toes are dragging. So it's scary that way with no place to go once you go off the track. A rider down between the corkscrew and turn seven. It's number 219, Tom Walther from British Columbia. He's moving around, appears to be okay. Merkel scraping those knees like an outrigger as he flexes that Honda Interceptor through turns five and six. Now Quarterly has really made him ground. He's right on McDonald's tail. Quarterly is moving up. Oh, he's down! Dale Quarterly, number 32, down on the exit from turn number seven, sliding along into the dirt ahead of the motorcycle. Dale Quarterly on the Kawasaki. He's up, and he's pushing the bike away from the track. Mike Spencer, what happened there with Dale Quarterly when he went down? Judging from the way both wheels are off the ground, I'd say that the motorcycle slid sideways, then caught traction. When the tires caught traction, the motorcycle tried to high side, but luckily it didn't. Instead, the front end slid out, and Dale went down fairly easily. I can't believe he's hanging onto the motorcycle. You should always try to get away from it to avoid being hurt should it flip over. As it is, it looks like Dale is okay. I think he's really lucky in this case. Tom Walder now receiving help from the officials. He's holding his right knee. Mike, these riders do actually drag their knees along the ground at super fast speeds. How much protection do those knee pads offer? The knee pads add some protection to the rider's outfit. He also leans the motorcycle over so far that his knee is dragging on the ground, and he uses it as a banking indicator. It tells him just how far he's leaned over. It can also function as a stabilizer if the motorcycle starts to slide while leaned over in a corner. He can put more pressure on his knee and catch the motorcycle to save himself from crashing. The only danger with hanging your knee out is the possibility of clipping a curb with it, and that would really hurt. Flying Fred Merkel dives in on the inside line for turn nine and laps number 70, Jim Nipp of Indianapolis. Merkel now three seconds ahead of Wes Cooley. Mike, there's such a great speed differential between riders like Merkel and the riders he's lapping. Just how dangerous is that? 
Merkel really has to be careful that the rider in front of him doesn't move across his line and run him off the road, especially considering that there's a 30 to 40 mile per hour speed differential in some parts of the racetrack. Merkel soon coming up to lap this bunch of riders, headed by number 141, Jeff Haney, a very successful dirt track racer. Jeff was a former Team Honda dirt track racer, and amazingly enough, this is only his second road race. For someone with so little road race experience, he's doing extremely well today. Merkel into turn number nine, now five seconds ahead of number 34, Wes Cooley, in second, who in turn has a safe margin between himself and Sam McDonald. Merkel as he lifts his knee over the curbstone in turn number three. That is precision. Merkel now enjoys a commanding lead. Looks over his shoulder as he heads toward the corkscrew, passing slower riders with apparent ease. Cooley number 34, still five seconds behind, but he appears to be riding a little more aggressively as the race goes on. I actually timed him at only 4.5 seconds behind Merkel as they came through turn five. Well, maybe Cooley's on the march, but he's got a useful edge over Sam McDonald, number 29. Wes Cooley leaning way over into turn number eight, then the short shoot into turn number nine. And Cooley completely in control coming out of turn number nine. Sam McDonald, number 29, a transplanted California, now living in Oklahoma. His brother, Phil McDonald, a tuner for a Honda, is a former flat tracker and road racer. His father, Norm McDonald, is also in the motorcycle industry, making it a total motorcycling family for the McDonald's. Mike Spencer, earlier in the race, we saw flying Fred Merkel take the lead away from Cooley by outbreaking him going into turn number nine. Just how important is good braking in superbike racing? The safest way to pass is to brake as late as possible going into the corner while keeping the inside line. This allows you to block your opponent's line and force him outside, therefore slowing him down. The toughest thing about braking is not slowing down too much so that you lose more speed than is really necessary. The key is to go in deep and come out hard. Merkel with four seconds now over Cooley, who is only one and a half seconds ahead of McDonald. Roberto Pietri is now in fourth spot ahead of number 24, Reuben McMurder from Ontario, Canada. Merkel continues to cut his way through the back markers with a pair of ease. Merkel is an attacking rider, and you can see here in the corkscrew how he sets up to pass an opponent. Merkel makes it look so easy. Mike, how much is the success of a rider like Fred Merkel due to him having a works Honda motorcycle and the support of a good team of mechanics? Fred is a very talented rider and his factory machinery is the very best available anywhere. The combination is certainly tough to beat. No matter how good the equipment is, it's still the rider that takes the bike to Victory Circle. At my last timing, Wes Cooley was only three and a half seconds behind Fred Merkel as they race up the hill toward the corkscrew. Mike, we talked earlier about tires and how they can affect a rider's performance. Is Merkel slowing or is Cooley catching up and is it the tires? Well, it looks to be a combination of both, Larry. Merkel appears to be going slower and Cooley is definitely going faster. It may well be that Merkel's tires are overheating right now. past the finish line and Cooley is definitely making ground. We may see a close race to the finish. Merkel lapping number 169, Trig Westby from Tulsa, Oklahoma, possibly a neighbor of Sam McDonald's. Lap number 18 now as Fred Merkel on the number 84 Honda Interceptor goes under the bridge and into turn number four. Fred Merkel, 22 years old, from Stockton, California. It's almost a hometown crowd for Merkel. Cooley is now only three and a half seconds behind Merkel, and he seems to be gaining. 
Mike Spencer, it would appear that Cooley is having an easier time lapping the back markers. At this point in the race, so much can be gained or lost depending on how smoothly you can pass those slower riders. As I said before, there's such a big speed differential that the faster riders have to be careful not to shake up the lapped rider and cause him to bobble or pull across into their line. Watch how Fred Merkel handles these riders here. Merkel, number 84, passes number 91, Dan Slock of Spanaway, Washington, and follows 45, Robert Holden from Dixon, California, setting him up for a pass along the start-finish straightaway. Merkel waves a signal to his pit crew. What do you think that was, Mike? Cooley is now less than two seconds behind Merkel, and the signal may have been a sign that his tires are going away and he can't go any faster. Merkel passes number 89, Kevin Monahan from Lake George, New York, and Cooley is right there in your picture. Cooley is within striking distance behind Merkel. Mike West Cooley just made up three seconds on Merkel in one lap. What do you think caused that? It's probably a combination of two things. West seems to be having less trouble lapping slower riders, and Fred's bike seems to be sliding around more than usual. I'd say that the tires on Merkel's bike are overheating, causing the bike to slide around. These 160-mile-an-hour superbikes weigh around 390 pounds, and that makes the choice of the right tire compound extremely critical. Lap 20, number 84, Fred Merkel, just two seconds ahead of Wes Cooley. In third, number 29, Sam McDonald, with Roberto Pietre fourth, Ruben McMurder fifth, but the race is for first place as Cooley continues his charge and laps Randy Skyver, who is in eighth place. A rider down on the outside of turn number four as Cooley goes by. Merkel now with the corkscrew, lapping number 141, Jeff Haney, who is in seventh place. And Cooley is now less than 20 yards behind Merkel, literally breathing down his neck. Merkel with Jeff Haney separating him from a determined West Cooley. Into turn number nine, Cooley gets by Haney and sees Merkel just ahead. The ambulance has been called to the rider in turn four, and Merkel and Cooley are almost side by side. Cooley drives to the inside and passes Merkel as they both lap Chris Crowell for the second or perhaps the third time. Mike, now the race is on as the workers continue to attend the rider in turn four. Cooley made up a six-second deficit to take the lead, but you can't count Merkel out just yet. This will probably spur Fred on even more. has just been put out on the finish line, but neither Merkel nor Cooley has seen it yet. So this will be the last lap of racing for these two. Cooley and Merkel into turn number eight. And heading for turn number nine. It's going to be a massive disappointment for these young riders. And there they see the red flag coming out. The race has been stopped to allow the ambulance, which is on the inside of the track, to get to the injured rider on the outside of the track in turn four. The downed rider is Jim Poet, number 10, from Duarte, California. The AMA rule states that if a race is red flagged, it's scored from the previous lap. Therefore, Merkel will win this race and not Cooley, who actually crossed the finish line ahead of him. As Cooley and Merkel pull into the pits with 22 laps of this 30-lap race completed, that will be the official finish. Jim Poet, number 10, appears not to be critically hurt as they prepare to take him away in the ambulance. With the race officially red flagged, the results will be taken from the previous one in this country. 340-pound motorcycles putting out 150 horsepower and capable of speeds of 200 miles an hour on a long track. They're streamlined and boast ultra-sophisticated technology, and they also have breathtaking acceleration. Mike... Americans are enjoying unprecedented success in Grand Prix racing around the world, having won 22 consecutive GP races. How do you account for this American domination of a traditional European style of racing? Larry, I think the single most interesting fact that's popping out in my mind about the European racing now is that the American riders over there have come from dirt track racing here in the United States. They've typically run all of the Grand National Championship races, with the exception of Freddie Spencer, who also started out on dirt track racing. So we're looking at, at that type of background that tends to be extremely helpful in teaching these riders how to slide the motorcycle even on the asphalt, which is typically not the case. The European riders simply don't have this experience. They don't have the opportunity to do this. And I believe that's what our big advantage is over in Europe. Good point. Let's meet some of the top runners in Formula One competition. 
Number two, Kenny Roberts, the king from Modesto, California, three times a world road racing champion who's won this race at Laguna Seca four times. Number seven, Randy Mamola from Santa Clara, currently number three in the world championship. He won here in 1981 and 83. Number 43, Mike Baldwin, the current American road racing champion, going for his third straight title in 1984. Number 93, Richard Schlachter from Old Lyme, Connecticut, two-time American road racing champion, 1979 and 1980. Number 34, Wes Cooley, two-time Superbike champion, 1979 and 1980. Number 24, Ruben McMurder, the Canadian National Superbike champion, also competing in American Formula One races. Well, those are some of the fastest of the 26 riders lining up for the first half of the 200-kilometer Formula One race. On the pole position, the fastest qualifier, Kenny Roberts, with a lap of 1 minute, 6.952 seconds, 102.163 miles an hour, a new track record. Lining up next to Roberts in second position, Mike Baldwin, 1 minute, 7.772 seconds, the speed 100.926 miles an hour. Third fastest qualifier, Randy Mamola, a minute, 7.923 seconds, 100.306 miles an hour, Mamola's first time here on a Honda. Fourth fastest and the only other rider on the front row, Richard Schlachter, one minute, 10.392 seconds, 97.170 miles per hour. That's the lineup. All eyes are on Roberts, Baldwin, and Mamola as we wait for the start. The constitute this 200-kilometer Formula One race is underway. And immediately, it's Randy Mamola, number seven, twice a winner here, who goes into the lead with Kenny Roberts and Mike Baldwin right behind him. Mike, the one rider missing from the lineup today is the current world champion, Freddie Spencer, who qualified at 1 minute, 8.191 seconds, over 100 miles an hour. Then what happened? Freddie had qualified fourth fastest and was really expected to do very well here. In fact, to carry the Honda banner into the winner's circle. But yesterday, during the final practice, Freddie crashed in turn six and broke his collarbone. The cause of the mishap, according to Freddie, was that when he braked for the corkscrew, the lever came right back to the handlebar with no brake pressure whatsoever. Freddie actually threw the motorcycle on the ground to avoid running into the Armco barrier head first. In doing so, he damaged his shoulder and broke his collarbone. So today, there is no fast Freddie Spencer, the man who fought tooth and nail to win the world championship for Honda over Kenny Roberts and Yamaha. That was Honda's first ever 500cc World Road Racing Championship. But now, coming towards the end of the first lap is Randy Mamola, who in many ways is Spencer's teammate. He glances behind him to look for Roberts and Baldwin, then pops one of his famous wheelies out of turn nine. The front three almost four seconds ahead of the rest of the pack at the end of lap one. Mamola through turn two on the fastest part of the track, pulls a wheelie at 130 miles an hour. Roberts doing the same thing a little ways behind him. Mike, riders of this caliber make those wheelies look so easy even at 130 miles an hour. Just how easy is it and what are the dangers? These bikes are so light and produce so much horsepower that they're capable of wheeling at any point on the racetrack. However, there are only five or six riders in the entire world who can control that power and do wheelies like the ones we're seeing here. Obviously, if a rider were to make a mistake while wheeling at over 100 miles an hour, the consequences would be devastating. Randy Mamola, 23 years old from Santa Clara, California, twice the bridesmaid in the World Championship, third in the world last year, and twice a winner here in this event at Laguna Seca. A Suzuki works rider for several years, he switched to Honda for this season. He did not ride the first two GPs, but nonetheless should finish third, and depending on Freddie Spencer's injury, could well finish second again. Mamola really enjoys his racing and is conscious of being a part of the entertainment industry. The way I look at it, it's a business and it's, it's my career, but it's also a show business for the people, and, and uh, I'm here to put on a show for them. And, and if I can, if I have enough time to look around and do some wheelies out of turn nine, it, it's great for them and it, it keeps them coming back, and, and that's what the sport's all about. Roberts now slides by on the approach to the corkscrew. Roberts, Mamola, and Baldwin. Now Baldwin goes for the inside line into turn seven and takes second place from Mamola. Roberts pulls a wheelie and Baldwin gives a hand signal to somebody. Now Mamola goes to the inside line for turn nine to take back second place. Mike, these three are so much faster than anyone else in this race. Are they really putting on an exhibition? Larry, I'd have to say so. 
The caliber of these riders and the equipment they're on is the best there is. These riders could easily run off and hide from the rest of the competitors, but they realize how important a close race is to the spectators. So they're not only here to race, but they're here to entertain and show the spectators what world-class racing really looks like. Robertson to turn four ahead of Mamol and Baldwin, but it's still very close. The last lap averaged 98.858 miles an hour, which is a very hot pace. Mike, we hear about the tire troubles that racers have in spite of more time and money being spent on tire research. Can you tell us about the tires that these racers are using today? The tires used in road racing have no tread pattern. They have a slick, smooth surface that relies on operating temperatures and a series of different rubber compounds for traction. A rider has to evaluate the temperature of the track, the type of surface, the length and the speed of the race in selecting which compound of tire he will use. The right choice of compound is critical. Mamola took advantage of Robert's wheelie there to sweep by on turn one. Number 93, Richard Schlachter is some ways behind, but two and a half seconds ahead of number 34, Wes Cooley, who's running in fifth place. Mamola again with that crowd-pleasing wheelie has just lapped at 99.346 miles an hour, the fastest lap of the race so far. Mike, what are the ramifications of choosing a wrong tire compound? In the least consequence, the tires will slide around a little and not deliver the needed traction. In the worst possible case, it could be catastrophic. Well, Roberts still trails Mamola as this leg comes to a close. As we mentioned, Kenny Roberts, the most successful of any American motorcycle racer, will be retiring after today's race. As he and Mamola pull away from Mike Baldwin, Roberts must be planning his moves to get by Mamola, who was at one time Roberts' protege. Baldwin now five seconds behind the leading pair. Here is a privilege for all American race fans, two of the best racers in the world, putting on an exhibition of motorcycle riding that is truly marvelous. Mamola, still young, 23 years old, and the Grandmaster Kenny Roberts retiring at 32. Roberts has to be gauging the moment to make his move in Mamola. You should be able to see the setup two or three turns ahead of the actual move. Stuart Rollins had an interesting comment about how unique these motorcycles really are. Roberts, Mamola, and Baldwin's bikes are all custom built. For example, Mamola could not jump on Roberts' bike and make it run as fast, and neither could Roberts ride Mamola's machine. Each bike is tailored to fit each rider's strong riding style, and it would take hours to change the suspension, the handlebars, the seat, and sometimes even the whole frame. Mamola and Roberts indeed taking a different line on turn seven, a wide line on the exit, so close to the wide line. Look at his bike shake, and he's taking the inside line to pass Mamola. But Randy stays to the right on the short shoot to turn nine. But Roberts has got the line and shuts Mamola out. The scoring tower tells the story. Roberts, Mamola, Baldwin, Rich Lactor, and Randy Renfro. Roberts and Mamola have both just lapped at over 100 miles an hour. Roberts at 100.543, Mamola at 100.293. And Roberts is just streaking away. He really has the bit between his teeth now. Kenny Roberts, who has only raced three times this year, the Daytona 200, which he won for the unprecedented third time, the Imola 200 in Italy, which he also won, then the Transatlantic Trophy Match Race Series, which the American team won, and Roberts won the last race of that series. Now at Laguna Seca, almost his home track, Kenny is from Modesto, California. Roberts is keeping his 1984 winning streak alive by breaking away from Imola on the last lap of his two-leg Camel Pro Series road race. Roberts into turn nine for the last time. Number 71, Dave Roper on the Ducati. Ahead of him as King Kenny raises the front wheel in a victory salute toward the checkered flag. So Roberts, to the delight of this crowd, has won the first half of this two-leg race, an event that is scored on the Olympic system. Mamola finishing second in the first leg can still win the event by winning the second leg. As Roberts rides back to the pits, let's take a look at the first leg results. Kenny Roberts wins it with an average speed of 99.286 miles an hour. Randy Mamola second, Mike Baldwin third, Richard Slachter fourth, Randy Renfro takes fifth, and Wes Cooley finishes sixth. So Cooley, who had such bad luck in the Superbike finale, manages to score a strong sixth place in the Formula One first leg. We'll be back with the second leg. 
Well, Mike Spencer, the 80,000 spectators that have witnessed first the Superbike race and now the Formula One race certainly have been getting their money's worth. Now the speculation has to be, can the experience of Roberts keep at bay the youth of Mamola in Roberts' last ride? Stuart Rowlands had an opportunity to talk with both Kenny and Randy earlier. It's very difficult to come out here once in a while and uh, try to beat these guys, so um, if you don't do it full time, it's one of the things that you should probably uh, set and watch. So I think this will probably be my last event. I asked Randy Mamola if he was going to let you win, and he just sort of looked at me and said, yeah, I know it would be nice for Kenny uh, to win his last race, um, but I got to try to be the first guy to ever win this race on a Honda. I think that uh, it's going to be a, a close race, but I think that uh, the equipment's working good, tires are good, everything's working pretty good. I think we've got a pretty good shot at it. Are you saying goodbye as you go around? Yeah, I probably will be. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, I really have mixed emotions about it. You know, I, I've done uh, a lot here at Laguna Seca in, in, in the U.S. And, and also in Europe. And it's one of them things where you've got to say sometime that you've got to hang up your leathers I'd rather say it when I'm competitive. I'd rather go out on top, and I think that's uh, what I'd like to do. It's better than getting kicked out. <laughs> Kenny, from all your thousands of fans, good luck. Okay, thank you very much. Better than getting kicked out indeed. And now the grid of 26 riders assembling for the second 100-kilometer leg. We've talked so much about Molan Roberts, but let's not forget Mike Baldwin. He showed in the first leg that he could ride with the best of them. And Mike, can we expect more from Baldwin in this heat? I think so, Larry. The first leg gave Mike a chance to sort out his bike a little more and to pick up some pointers from Kenny and Randy out on the racetrack. He should be even faster in the second leg. The record crowd anticipating another first-class race. The mechanics clear the grid as the 26 riders get themselves ready for another 33 laps of this nine-turn, 1.9-mile track. They put the bike into gear, rev up the engines, and they're off. And it looks like Baldwin got the drop on everyone. It's number 43, the current American road racing champion, Mike Baldwin, ahead of Kenny Roberts and Randy Mamola. Mike, both Baldwin and Mamola are on Honda. Is there any difference between the two bikes? Baldwin is on an RS500, which is a limited production Formula One and Grand Prix racing machine that is sold by Honda, whereas Mamola's bike is a true factory one-off hand-built racer. Randy's bike has more exotic lightweight components, and the engine produces even more horsepower than Mike's. Through the corkscrew and turn seven on lap one. Baldwin, Roberts, Mamola, then what is in effect the race within a race headed by number 141, Jeff Haney, number 93, Schlachter, 34, Cooley, and 96, Randy Renfro. Baldwin, who raced in Europe in the Grand Prix three times and had three top ten finishes, has never raced there a full season. Why do you think that is, Mike? Baldwin was racing in Europe as a privateer. Without the factory sponsorship, he felt he needed to be really competitive for an entire season. But today, Mike is showing us that he is a true world-class competitor. Cooley and Schlachter now in fourth and fifth. Baldwin has just lapped at 100.117 miles an hour, his fastest yet. Baldwin continuing to show a clean rear tire to Kenny Roberts. And one has to wonder whether Baldwin held something back in the first leg to make a better showing in the second leg, or are Roberts and Mamola just playing a waiting game? Roberts has proven that he can beat just about anyone on a given day. But even he can't afford to give someone as good as Mike Baldwin too much of a lead. Baldwin continues to lead both Roberts and Mamola as the bike shake and wobble coming from turn seven to turn eight. Both of these men hanging off the bikes to allow a better cornering angle. Straight, Roberts looks over his left shoulder for Mamola. Where are you, Randy? Come on up and let's play. Roberts in Baldwin's draft, now reeling him in and setting him up for the pass. And Roberts takes the inside line in turn three to take the lead. But Baldwin is sticking with him like glue as they both drift to the edge of the track and accelerate up the hill. Mamola is now some 15 yards behind. Out of 
the corkscrew and Baldwin rams the back of Robert's bike. He slams into Robert's exhaust pipe with his fairing. Look at Robert's exhaust pipe sticking out. So Baldwin is back in the lead in a most forceful way. Robert looks to his left as Randy Mamola goes by also. So it's Honda first and second as Roberts evaluates the damage. It's Mike Baldwin from Darien, Connecticut ahead of Randy Mamola with Kenny Roberts dropping back. Onto the front straightaway, Mike Baldwin in the red, white, and blue Honda, number 43 in front, Mamola second, and Roberts third, and Baldwin is on the gas. We feel all set to win the race, and uh, the bike's been prepared beautifully by Phil McDonald, and uh, the bike's running very well and handling well. I think we're pretty much ready. Baldwin and Mamola now definitely leaving Roberts behind. There's a possibility of some permanent damage to Roberts' bike. Baldwin from Mamola, and Mamola takes the inside line, passing Baldwin. As Randy looks over his right shoulder, Baldwin passes him back. This is exciting racing, Mike Spencer. Baldwin certainly has something to prove, and don't forget that this race counts in points towards the AMA Road Racing Championship, which Mike Baldwin currently leads. And Mike Baldwin would like to hold on to that title, no question about it. Out of seven, into eight, it's still Baldwin, number 43, right on his tailpipe, Randy Mamola, number seven. And Kenny Roberts, a distant third. The crowd doesn't like this. Stuart Rollins, you talked earlier to Kenny Roberts, and he seemed pretty confident going into this race. Well, this is Kenny's home crowd, and of course, it's rumored to be his last race here ever. In fact, Kenny will be desperately disappointed if he doesn't win. Down the front straightaway, and Mamola goes by Baldwin, and Baldwin is suddenly desperately disappointed. Randy Mamola out in front, Mike Baldwin right behind him. The front wheels come up in the air ever so slightly as they accelerate up the front straight at over 130 miles an hour. Mamola in front, Baldwin running in second spot as they come into traffic. And here comes King Kenny Roberts in third. Roberts apparently has kicked the exhaust pipe back in, and he is back on the gas. Into the corkscrew. Mamola number seven, Baldwin 43, and Roberts number two. It is an East Coast, West Coast battle. Mamola, the freckle-faced young Californian. Mike Baldwin, the Connecticut Yankee. And Kenny Roberts out of Modesto, California. Look, battling for fourth. It's Rich Schlachter and Wes Cooley. The crowd's attention, though, is focused on these three riders. In front, Mamola, Baldwin, and here comes Roberts on the outside. Onto that front straightaway. The front wheels come up in the air, but this is serious racing as Roberts goes by on the inside. So Kenny Roberts has gone to second. We've got a Yamaha sandwich. Cooley, Schlachter, still battling for fourth. But Roberts now is gaining on the kid he taught how to race, Randy Mamola. Underneath the bridge, through traffic, it is still Randy Mamola holding on to the lead. With Kenny Roberts cutting through the traffic behind him in second spot, and Baldwin holding on to third. Into the corkscrew, back and forth. Mamola, Roberts, Baldwin, and look at the Yamaha wobble of Kenny Roberts all over the track. Other riders would back off the throttle. Roberts just holds it wide open. Into the corkscrew, it's still the battle for fourth. Wes Cooley and Rich Lachter. But the attention of 80,000 standing and screaming fans focused on Randy Mamola straight up in the air as Roberts comes up to challenge. It's a drag race down the front straightaway. Mamola holding the throttle wide open. It's still the Honda in front by inches. Roberts trying to get by Mamola. And Baldwin moves up to third, a close third, right behind Roberts. Underneath the bridge, Mamola riding at 110%. Kenny Roberts right in his rear tail. Mamola looks around to see him. It's still Roberts trying to catch Mamola. The corkscrew. Roberts setting him up, going to the inside. The crowd standing and cheering. Roberts goes to the outside and takes the lead. Kenny Roberts goes out in front. The front wheel up in the air. Roberts, Mamola, Baldwin, and the two Honda pilots settling behind Roberts. Coming out of turn eight, into turn number nine. The first gear, left hand turn. Roberts continues to hold the lead. Mamola second as they cut through traffic. The white flag comes out. One lap to go, and Kenny Roberts is just moments away from his final race, his final checkered flag. And he is opening up the lead and lifting up the front wheel at 130 miles an hour. It's the King's final command performance here at Laguna Seca. The crowd's cheering him on, and you've got to wonder what's going through his mind. The European press calls him the greatest road racer in the history of motorcycle racing. Kenny Roberts, 32 years old, from Modesto, California. The final race, the final reign of the King, and he is certainly going out in style in front of a record crowd of over 80,000 fans here at Laguna Seca. Mamola number seven dropping off the pace. It is Kenny
Kenny Shaw as he goes into turn eight and into turn number nine. The corner workers cheering him on, the crowd standing, the front straightaway, Roberts down the front straightaway, the front wheel up in the air, the final salute from Kenny Roberts as he takes the checkered flag. And Roberts goes around in the victory lap, he waves to the crowd, taking the accolades of the 80,000 people, the front wheel up in the air again as he goes to the corkscrew. They love him here at Laguna Seca. Kenny Roberts wins both rounds of the Champion Spark Plug 200. His speed of the second leg, 99.712 miles an hour. Randy Babola, Mike Baldwin second and third. Randy Renfro, last year's 250 champion, finishes fourth. Richard Slachter fifth. And Wes Cooley finishes sixth. So Kenny Roberts adds an exclamation point to an incredible racing career by winning this champion spark plug 200 here at laguna seca we'll be right back with stuart rollins and victory circle with kenny roberts right after this okay has been brought to you by the stroh brewery company brewers of strohs old milwaukee and other fine beers and honda motorcycles honda follow the leader and by levi's action slacks and action jeans let's go down to stuart rollins in victory circle Larry, what a tremendous day of racing. First, Fred Merkel winning the Battle of the Superbikes, and then King Kenny Roberts, internationally the most decorated of all American racers in the last ride of his career. Kenny, the most successful retirement in motorcycle history. How'd you feel? Well, there's uh, no words to describe how I feel. I, what can I say? You happy? You sad? Uh, both. Very happy, and uh, probably tomorrow I'll be very sad. <laughs> no chance of coming out of retirement? Not this year, anyway. <laughs> Kenny, good luck. Okay, thank you. Then there was the magnificent riding of Randy Mamola, showing just why he is one of the top three in the world. Randy, how do you feel? I'm very pleased that uh, Kenny did uh, so well in front of his fans for his last race. If you hadn't had time problems, could you have beaten him? Well, that would have been tough. They don't call him the king for nothing. <laughs> and Mike Baldwin, the American road racing champion, with a super display of riding that will surely win him his third consecutive title. To beat, actually, Kenny Roberts and Randy Mamola off the line, you were leading well through the first couple of laps. How'd you do it? Well, I looked at the flagman very carefully, and I, I anticipated that he'd, th he'd throw it a little bit earlier than normal, and I was right, and uh, so I did get a good start. Um, once I was out in front, you know, they had to take their time about where they could pass me. They were able to pass me easily on the straightaway, but, uh, you know, the, the bike really handled and ran perfectly, and the tires, everything performed just fine. We're, uh, we're well-situated in points for the championship, and... I have to admit, towards the end of that race, I was being very cautious, passing traffic, thinking about points, and not letting anything go wrong. Still a superb ride, Michael. Congratulations. Thank you. Larry, we couldn't have asked for better weather, a more beautiful track, or a better standard of racing and sportsmanship. With a last look at the results, let's not forget the determined rides put in by Randy Renfro fourth, Richard Schlachter fifth, and Wes Cooley sixth. Now, Larry, back to you from the victory circle. Mike Spencer, in one word, sum up this day of racing. Absolutely incredible. I couldn't believe the way Kenny Roberts pulled it out. What a way to go in style. I couldn't say it any better. That's it from Laguna Seca, California. I'm Larry Hoffman with Stuart Rollins and Mike Spencer saying thanks for joining us. Looks like you lost some weight. What'd you do, take a bath? <laughs>